Today, we're looking at all the spin-offs that spawned from Andrei Sapkowski's Witcher novels and short stories, like The Last Wish and Time of Contempt. Note that those won't be included in the list because they are the source materials for all the crossovers. And another note, there's enough monster hunting entertainment on this list for even the most die-hard Witcher fan. Wound up in this ancient forest of yours. Worth looking into, I'd say. Polish adaptations. <laughs> If you're shocked to learn that there is a cinematic adaptation of Sapkowski's books in the form of the Polish-produced The Hexer that came out in 2001, well, you wouldn't be the only one. It's not well known in the West, it's in Polish, duh, and it was poorly received at release due to its low budget and basic special effects. So, it has all the making of a failed project that won't be repeated. And yet, the writer and director of the film would go on to make a TV series also called The Hexer that came out the following year in Poland and was only slightly better received. In fact, one of the biggest critics of the movie and TV series is none other than Sapkowski himself, and this fact probably didn't bode too well for how either are remembered today. <laughs> Comic books. Finish the novels and looking for more Witcher material to read? Well, luckily, there are three comic book series that highlight the adventures of Geralt and company. The first comic series released between 1993 and 95 includes six issues that are largely based off Sapkowski's Witcher short stories. But they are also written in Polish, so you'll need Google Translate or a fan translation to make any sense of them. The second and third series, however, are based on the games developed by CD Projekt Red, so they're more accessible. There's the two-part Egmont series that released in 2011 that told an original tale, and then there's the Dark Horse Comics four-part series that ran between 2015 and 2019, which included original storylines and others based on Sapkowski's works. Also, there's the CD Projekt Red made digital comic that was released alongside the Hearts of Stone expansion in 2015. Want to settle for curves and way? Not a chance. Board Game is a digital adaptation of CD Projekt Red's board game, set in the dark fantasy universe of the critically acclaimed Witcher video games. If you're not into video games but loved reading the Witcher novels and want a more interactive form of entertainment featuring Geralt and the gang, then perhaps a board game would be more your thing. In that case, the Witcher Adventure game by Fight Fantasy Games delivers the goods, as it allows you to play as Geralt, Triss, Dandelion, or Yarpen, and employ different methods of play, like combat, diplomacy, or charm. While a wound token occupies an action space, the hero cannot place his action token in that action space, thus preventing the hero from performing that action. And if you love this more communal approach to gaming and want to get a few buddies together for a more D&D-like experience, there are also two tabletop games in 2001's The Witcher Game of Imagination and 2018's The Witcher Role-Playing Game. Board games and tabletop games are like the old-school version of couch co-op. Choose your friends and enemies wisely and use magic, cunning, or brute force to overcome any obstacle on your path. Geralt in other games. Seems they were untouched by any predators. Guess the roots attack anything that wanders within range. Damn territorial, this thing we're dealing with, whatever it is. The Witcher franchise is probably best known for its video game trilogy, even though the books came first. But did you know that Geralt has made a few appearances in other huge games? That's right, this dude is so popular a single franchise can't contain him. He's made his way into Namco's celebrated Soul Calibur fighting series, turning up as a guest character in 2018's Soul Calibur 6. Challenged a Witcher. Must have had a death wish. And in a crossover event extraordinaire, he got his own quest in Capcom's blockbuster Monster Hunter World in early 2019, where Geralt was tasked with literally doing what he does best, killing monsters. Also, on the Switch, the White Wolf was joined by Siri in a DLC pack for the mech shooter, Daemon X Machina, in 2019. 
So, if you've beat The Witcher 3 a million times like I have, and you're craving more Geralt gaming experiences, you can give these games a try. Alright. Godspeed to you. Take care. Gwent-based games. Keep calm, Tiberius. We freaking love Gwent. A good chunk of the hours we poured into The Witcher 3 were actually spent thrashing opponents in the awesome game, as well as hunting down the rarest cards we could find. Our 2015 selves wished with all our might that we'd get a standalone Gwent game to satisfy our card shark desires. So, when CD Projekt Red released that exact game in 2018, we were all over it. <laughs> Gwent the Witcher card game is all Gwent all the time, and better yet, it's free to play. And if this isn't enough to satisfy all you Gwent loving gamers, then the single player Gwent based RPG Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales is the icing on the cake. It's an original story set in the Witcher's universe, and the battles are decided through Gwent games. Sounds like heaven to us. Might it please your grace to summon the hangman? He ties a noose for him, should have him jabbering right quick. I'll speak to them first. Netflix series. Minced our tender meat, and so cried the witcher. He can't be bleed. That's not how it happened. As the most recently released adaptation stemming from the Witcher franchise, the Netflix series aptly entitled The Witcher divided critics and fans, with the former dumping on it and the latter loving it. So, whose judgment should we trust? Well, Call us old-fashioned, but when the man who created the entire Witcher universe speaks up to sing the show's praises, as Sapkowski did when the series released in late 2019, we know who we're siding with. The fans and Sapkowski himself. Why do you risk your life on the battlefield when you can rest on your throne? Because there is a simplicity in killing monsters, is there not? Seeing Geralt brought to life by A-list actor Henry Cavill, who is also a big fan of the games, was an absolute treat to witness for longtime fans, and the show's mix of action-adventure with light-hearted comedic moments really lent it a sense of charm that was missing from more serious fantasy shows like Game of Thrones. We can't wait for season two. Neither. Are you calling me a liar, old man? Uh, the butcher of Blaviken bleats utter nonsense. Video Game Trilogy The creature carried her deep into Crookback Bog. Didn't harm her though. In fact, Anna seems content there. Content? What is this tribe, Witcher? With The Witcher 3 selling 28 million copies over multiple platforms, it's easy to see why the game, and the Video Game Trilogy as a whole, is the most important adaptation of Sapkowski's novels. Sure, the novels had a loyal readership, but the games, especially the third one, turned this franchise into a global juggernaut. That night, when the Baron ordered everyone to lock their doors, stay inside. What did you and the Baron do? Gotta ask the Baron about that. The original Witcher game, released in 2007 on PC, brought the tale of Geralt of Rivia to a wider audience and garnered much praise for its deep gameplay, while 2011's The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings saw Geralt land on a home console for the first time, the Xbox 360, and would go on to sell over 8 million copies and make people hungry for the third game, a game that we all know and love. It's simple, without the games, there wouldn't be the current explosion of Witcher crossovers we see today. Seems like you could use a Witcher, so yeah, I'll help. 